What's up, guys? Bam! I did it. I did it. I did it. That's right. Got it done. Got it done. What I'm talking about are the luggage boxes on my Razer MX650. That's right. That's right. Hyper tough from Walmart. Hyper tough from Walmart. You see the rack I made? Like I call it the E rack. Da -da -da. Check it out, guys. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, it's a successful uh, case mount, guys. Uh, on my Razer MX650. Again, as I shared earlier in uh, one of my other videos, uh, I got this concept. I know there's other guys out there that have used the same type of boxes, but I plan on doing this a long time ago. I just hadn't gotten around to it. But, um, I got this concept actually from a motorcycle that I had in the past. Uh, it's a KLR 650 Dual Sport. Uh, Kawasaki, for those of you who don't know. But anyway, at, at that time I had Jesse Luggage Boxes. They make luggage boxes for like high-end motorcycles for BMW, whatever. And at that time I had, had a KLR 650 and I had aluminum lug luggage boxes uh, on the side just like this. And I even had one top box. So, uh, but anyway... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite impressed with what I came up with. It's a very secure mount. It won't be falling off, I guarantee you that. I'm the type of person, if I'm going to do something like this, I'm not going to have any rattles or anything. It's going to be done right to the best that I can do it. But anyway, um, you can see inside the boxes here. Very sturdy, very sturdy. Now check this out, guys. This is what's really cool about it, too. Let's see if I can do this quick enough. I made the boxes also where they can be removable. Arg! Hang on. Okay. okay. Check this out. Bam! Ah! Surprise! See the little side uh, uh, bracket I put on the box? But anyway, yeah, they are removable, so I can take them off if I want or need to. Uh, you know, to get into a certain spot or whatever. But anyway, or just to take them inside. Uh, you can see right here where I had the bolts come through the metal, and then I had to weld them... Uh, on uh, you know onto this hole here on, on this side here you can kind of see I used some JB Will type of stuff and then actually actually I used super glue for the bottom bolt you know and they worked just fine but anyway yeah I had to drill the holes and get these bolts through there and measure everything off but it came out really well I'm very impressed with what I did here guys and you can do it too that's right you guys can do it too if you choose to that is let me turn this torch on. Uh, my light, rather. Um, so, yeah, it just goes back on like that. And I can put, it, put the big flat washers there. See that right there? Oh, yeah. Flat washers like that. And uh, I've got these butterfly nuts. That makes it, they make it really easy. If I decide to uh, take them off or leave them off. Yeah. I'm very impressed with it. Uh, it's kind of hard to do. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. See that, guys? See how, how fast that is? Yeah, that simple. Cost me like no money <laughs> to do this, except for the boxes, which I bought a couple weeks ago. For this very project, I'm trying to get this wing nut lined up. Oh, yeah, there it is. See that, guys? Bazam! So, they're very secure. As you can see, they come off really easy, go back on easy. And I can even lock the boxes, which is really nice. So, uh, I'm, I impressed myself with this one. Not bragging nothing, but wow, they really came out good. And I, like I said, I fabricated everything out of my own head. I didn't copy anybody for the mounting bracket or nothing. So, so that gives me a little bit more confidence about what I can do. Now, I'm going to polish all that off uh, when I, uh, I'm going to polish it all off. Uh, hang on a second. When I, uh, when it gets warmed up so I can paint it, paint the bracket and everything. I'm going to take it off, sand it really good and paint it nice black or, or maybe even a, a matte orange. I might even do orange just to be different. But yeah, it, it is going to be painted. Of course, we're in the wintertime. I can't do that. But yeah, guys, take a, look at the side profile. You know? Look at, the, look at the top profile there. How good that looks. That is d -d 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 dope. Dope. So, those of you who may want to try the same thing, go for it, man. Go for it. It came out, I am so impressed with it. And like I said, it won't be falling off anytime soon. It's secure. You see, I'm shaking it there. Very secure. Very secure. And what I did was I used U-bolts. 
uh, right here. Not this size. This, this is a big one, but I used the smallest u bolts I could find. A lot smaller than this. I just drilled the holes in the metal and, you know, it goes across this rear bar right here. Like that. Like that. Like that. Okay, it just sits across it like that. Now, I got two of them on each side. One there, one there. And then what I did was I used uh, some rubber inner tube to help give it some traction so it doesn't slide. And I just cranked that bad boy down. Now, as you can see, it's quite sturdy. And, uh, and, and no, they're not in my way either. You know, I sit down on them. Hang on a second. Sit down on the bike. Not in my way at all. Oh, I can feel the touch of my butt cheeks a little bit, but it's not in the way. See that? See that right there? And I can still use the, the whole width of my seat like I always do. It doesn't bother me at all. See that? So, yeah, guys, this was a successful mod I did. One of the biggest mods I did. Uh, very happy with this because I'm the type of person, when I go riding... I like to have uh, everything that I uh, that I need to to uh, take care of uh, take care of any issues like a tire pump. I like to have that uh, tubes, of course. I got tubes in this bag right now, right in there. But now I can transfer them out of there and put them in there. <laughs> also, you guys go back and look at my videos, and I uh, you can check out my video on how I install this Alpina uh, automobile light on the bike. That's a great major upgrade. And I got one more light I'm going to be putting right here. Uh, just for visibility so people can see me coming. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the difference with my Razor MX650, as opposed to many other Razors in MX650, is this. I decided to keep uh, my Razor MX650 stock as far as the motor configuration. All I did was is to boost up the, the speed is... Uh, you know, I'm running a 48 volt lithium ion pack. I got a 20 amp hour lithium ion pack inside there. And it's going to be going to 40. So I'm going to stack. I'm going to have, it's going to be 40 amp hours. Now, to be honest with you, would I like this thing to be able to go 30 miles an hour? Yeah, I'd love to do that. But it's illegal. Okay. It's just an electric bike. So I'm going under electric bike t uh, 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 principles, you know, as far as, uh, you know, the rules and stuff. So. I don't want to draw any unwarranted or unwanted attention to myself or e-vehicles by being, you know, uh, by not obeying the law. So if a cop pulls me over, hey, 650 watt motor, I'm not breaking any laws. Top speed on this thing is only like, it's like right at 20, 21 miles an hour. That's what I've been clocked at. And uh, I've ridden this to work 30 miles. It's a 30 mile, 32 mile round trip to work for me. And I ride this. Every other day. So cause I got a, quite a few e-vehicles, guys. So I kind of bounce around a little bit. But I do ride this bad boy. Look at that back profile, dude. That looks dope. That really looks good. So I do uh, commute on this to work. And I've had no overheating issues or anything. And uh, my average speed is only like 16, 17 miles an hour. You know, and I can, like I said, I can hit 20. Sometimes I bump, you know, 18. You know, I'll do that for a while. And I got this super steep hill that I have to climb. It's like this, guys. No joke. No exaggeration. Hill is super steep. And uh, this bike takes me right up the hill. No problem. And when I, last time I rode it to work, I got to work. My motor temperatures were only uh, 117 degrees. That's right. That big boy only got up to 117 degrees. What does that mean? That means it's not going to overheat. The danger zone is like 165, 170. Okay. So I'm running this thing way cool. Way cool. Um, and then also, guys, just so you know, I'm not running the stock sprocket either. That is a, um, hang on, that is a Rebel Gears rear sprocket that I had made for this bike. It's a hundred tooth. So, it gives me more low end torque as opposed to top end. Like, again, it only tops out like 20 miles an hour, but that's legal, you know? And I can do that all day long on this bad boy, because that motor does not get hot when you gear it right. See, when you're using DC brush motors, you always always have to focus on the gearing. So that's the big thing. So I encourage you guys, you know, get your Razor MX650. You don't have to spend $3,000 like I did on the uh, Cobble Wolf Warrior, which I really like. But I ended up selling it because I kind of got freaked out when my motor went out on me. And uh, it made me a little nervous. Uh, so I decided to sell it and get something else. But anyway, um, this thing is just as bad 
as the Cobble Wolf Warrior and any of these other scooters. Matter of fact, in some ways, it's better. It's a better ride in many ways. Uh, as you can go back and see on my older videos, I have a Sun Tour Epicon shock in there, a, a true mountain bike shock. And I just, I had to add a little air pressure in there and it doesn't sag very much at all. As tall as it looks, it pretty much stays there. I had to let the air pressure go down a little bit. It was sagging a bit, so I pressured the the uh, the reservoir back up. And it's, uh, yeah, dude. So I don't abuse this bike. I just cruise on it because it's got the free wheel, right? It's got the free wheel on it. And I really like that. But I know if you hammer it, like when you take off and you constantly hit hammer and then the thing's smacking, you will uh, eventually, that will break on you. So I'm trying to avoid that. So what I do is... When I take off, I'll give myself a little push-off, or I'll just take off really gradually so I don't damage that free wheel sprocket. I've been lucky so far. I haven't had any problems with it. So, guys, there it is in all its glory. The Razor MX650 with luggage box, luggage carriers. I have some, uh, again, and with my Alpena uh, uh, automobile light that I'm using, Jeep lights right there that I got on this bad boy. Look at that, guys. That is metal casing, too. That's all metal. So I'm sharing these uh, ideas with you guys. So uh, you guys may want to add a, a lighting system, a, lot, uh, a car automobile lighting system to your vehicle. They're very cheap at Walmart. That right there is like $23. And then, of course, I got my 12-volt power supply here. Right there, guys. Lithium ion, 12-volt, 9,000 milliamp hours, okay? I'm going to cut the video short. I know you guys are getting bored. But I think this is really dope, guys. Again, you're talking to somebody... Who had the Cobble Wolf Warrior scooter? Okay, I put like 1,200 miles on that bad boy, and it's awesome. But I'm telling you, this right here, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. The Razor MX650 right here is just as bad or better than the Cobble Wolf Warrior. That's right, I said it. I know I had I had the Cobble Wolf Warrior guys, and also I'm a motorcycle rider, and I have. Mountain bikes, I do all that stuff. So uh, you, you can kind of take my word for it in a sense. Or at least think that I, I know what I'm talking about, okay? But you can get this way cheaper. I picked up a second one like two months ago for 250 what is it, 250 250 bucks. I got another one that I'm going to be working on. And uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do, but it's going to be like a zombie apocalypse type of build. So I'm looking forward to doing that. And again, I'm going to stick with the stock motor, but I'm going to try to get a a controller, a controller that I can, uh, that can handle up to like 60 volts. I don't know if they don't have very many breast motor controllers that can do that, but that, that's my goal. I'd like to, for the next one to, to, uh, be like a 60 volt version. Now at 60 volts, I'll have to watch my gearing and my motor temps, but I, you know, I'm a sensible rider. I'm not always maxed out, you guys. I'm just having fun cruising around, but it's nice to know you get that extra oomph when you want to use it. So I'm, I got some ideas in my head for that for the next build. But yeah, guys, it's really cool. I'm enjoying this. Uh, of course, it's wintertime right now. I'm not enjoying it outside now, but I'm enjoying, uh, uh, you know, modifying these inexpensive vehicles as opposed to paying a big dollar for the other stuff. So I'm just making this little video here to share with you guys some of my ideas and I'm not bragging, but I got some pretty good ones. Look at the luggage boxes, guys. That is dope as heck. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm going to end this video, and I'll holler at you guys later. Peace.